We have an anonymous caller from an anonymous place. Welcome to the Narrow Path. Thanks for calling. Hey, good afternoon. How are you doing? Good. And thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I've spoken to a lot of people about, you know, you're going to be familiar with this, uh, the Ezekiel, um, what's it, the temple. There's a new temple that's going to be rebuilt in Jerusalem. And I guess well, it's 40, 40 some people think, yeah, some yeah, people think ahead. it's... Some people think it's going to be rebuilt in Jerusalem. Yeah, I mean, Ezekiel does talk about a temple. It doesn't say that it's going to be rebuilt in our future, necessarily. Great. Now, how about this? I'd like to hear your views on it, but I'd also like to hang up so I can hear more clearly. Because I, okay. I'm at, because that's one of these things, okay, as I'm working through my eschatology or my end times, mm-hmm. that's the next step, and I think you're going to know slightly more about it than me. Okay. Well, I'll be glad to talk about it. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You too. God bless you. Bye now. Yeah, the last eight chapters of Ezekiel, chapters 40 through 47, are about, or actually nine chapters, chapter 40 through 48, are about a a vision of a temple that Ezekiel sees. And it's described thoroughly. And it has priests and it has altars and it has animal sacrifices. And it has its dimensions and its furniture all described. All that's there. And yet, it does not say uh, anything that would tell us when or if this temple is going to be built. It is simply a description of a temple. And uh, so some people think that this was a description of the temple that was built after Ezekiel's time by Zerubbabel. But the temple of Zerubbabel didn't fit this description. And so lots of people say, well, it can't be that one must be another one. Well, well, there hasn't really been another one built since then. So some say, well, it must be a temple that's going to be built in the future. There are some who want to make it out to be a temple that will be built in the millennium after Jesus comes back. And, uh, of course, one of the problems with that is that this temple describes uh, rituals of animal sacrifice, blood sacrifices. And the scripture says that those are done now, that Jesus fulfilled those. There's no more need for any blood sacrifices. So there would be no appropriateness about having a temple and sacrifices of that type ever since Jesus has died. And so that has caused a problem. But some people say, well, uh, this temple has to be built sometime. And since it wasn't built in the past, it must be a future temple. Well, that's... Not necessarily the only possibility. There are other possibilities. One of them uh, I, I take from looking at the passage in chapter 43 of Ezekiel, which is in the midst of this description of the temple. In chapter 3, verse, uh, excuse me, 43, verse 10 and 11, God says, Son of man, speaking to Ezekiel, describe the temple to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and let them measure the pattern, And if they are ashamed of all that they have done, make known to them the design of the temple and its arrangement. Well, it's saying that if they are ashamed, then this temple is for them, apparently. What he's saying is show it to them if they're ashamed of all the evil they've done. That is to say, this temple is what God has in mind if Israel is sufficiently repentant. Now, Israel's temple in Jerusalem, which Solomon had built, was destroyed. Uh, by the Babylonians because of the people's sins. And God say, now, if they've repented of this, uh, this is a temple that that uh, I have in mind for them. All right? But th- that's a big if. Were they? Were they repentant? It does not appear that they were. Uh, after Cyrus gave the decree that allowed all the Jews in who had been taken away into Babylon to return to Israel, the vast majority of them didn't even care to go back. They didn't go back to rebuild the temple. They didn't go back to reestablish the, their homeland. They just didn't have any interest. They were locked into Babylonian culture and uh, wanted to stay where they were. And so only 50,000 Jews altogether seem to have gone back with Zerubbabel. And that's not very many. That's a pretty small uh, showing. It doesn't show much enthusiasm on their part. And that makes me think that that's why the temple didn't, didn't end up looking like the one that's described here. Their repentance was not complete. And therefore, they ended up with a much less elaborate temple. They did get a temple, but it was not the one that got described here. 
I believe that this temple that we read here is the temple that might have been, the temple that could have been if they had if they'd been more thoroughly repentant and had, you know, wanted to go back and, and restore everything and get right with God. But that was not what they did. Their, their repentance was small and lackluster. And even those who did go back didn't necessarily uh, go back with great, uh, what shall we say, perseverance. They After they had a little bit of resistance, they soon got discouraged and stopped building the temple. There really just wasn't the spirit in these people that was needed to bring about the the change and to, and to qualify to have this kind of a big and glorious temple given to them. So that's what I think. I think it's not a temple that is necessarily going to be built. It's one that could have been if the people, as God said, had been ashamed, had been repentant. If they had been that way, then I believe the temple that is described there in Ezekiel is the temple that they would have no doubt had. That's my understanding of it.